Hey guys, I'm Jill with Pixie Cup and today I'm going to be showing you how to use a menstrual disc. All the ins and outs and at the end I'm going to go through some troubleshooting whether you have leaks or discomfort. If you're a fan of this type of content, please like and subscribe. When you first get your menstrual disc, you're going to want to make sure that you sterilize this. Make sure that you do this at the beginning of every period. Now there are three ways to sterilize, boiling, steaming, and spray. If you choose to go with boiling, I would recommend putting the disc in a whisk. This just helps to make sure that it doesn't touch the edges of the pot. If it does touch the edges of the pot, oftentimes it will burn and you'll have to replace your disc. I personally like to use a steamer to sterilize my menstrual disc. I use the Jayla steamer from Pixie Cup. You just add a little bit of water, place your disc inside, and it takes anywhere from three to five minutes. If you are someone who travels, use this sterilizing spray. You just generously coat your disc, wait two minutes, and it's sterilized. All the products I just mentioned, I do have them linked below, so you can check them out there. When inserting your Pixie disc, make sure to pinch the middle of the disc and then insert. It is helpful to use some Pixie lube. This does make for a painless insertion. Now you don't want to insert it straight back, instead tilt it downwards towards your tailbone. Assuming the squatting position or having one leg up can help with inserting it and making sure it gets in the right place. When inserting, it's really important to know where your pubic bone is and where your cervix is. If it's not behind your cervix, you're going to have leaks, and if it's not tucked behind your pubic bone, you're going to have leaks. I will talk more about this in the troubleshooting section, so please stay tuned for that. To remove your pixie disc, simply grab the stem and pull until you can reach the rim. Then you'll want to hook your finger underneath and then remove and dump the contents out. Make sure to remove your disc after 12 hours, wash it, and then you can reinsert. The stem is designed for your comfort, but if you find it uncomfortable, you can cut it off and then file it down with a nail file. However, we do recommend that you keep it on for at least one period before you decide to remove it. There is something called auto dumping, which basically means when you go pee or poo, your disc will come slightly untucked and a little spillage will come out. Now, this should only happen when you're going number one or number two. It shouldn't happen when you're working out or doing squats or yoga. So instead of going through the hassle of having to remove your entire disc and dump out all those contents, as you go to the bathroom, a little bit will slowly pour out and you don't have to remove it as often. Since your disc does come slightly untucked, you may have to re-tuck your disc behind that pubic bone before you go about your day. Now, the interesting part about auto dumping is it doesn't work for everyone. So it's kind of like the size might not be a perfect fit for you if you're auto dumping, which means it's coming untucked. So if you don't like this feature, then maybe try a different size and you might find that you no longer have auto dumping. If you've gone through this entire video and you've been using your menstrual disc for two to three periods and it's still leaking, we're gonna go through some troubleshooting. So earlier we talked about how the cervix and the pubic bone are really important by now, you probably know that, but we're gonna go in more depth on how to figure out if your disc is actually behind your cervix and if your disc is tucked far enough behind your pubic bone. This is how to find your pubic bone. Your pubic bone is going to be at the top of your labia folds and obviously it won't be squishy like the rest of the area. It's going to be very hard like maybe an elbow or a knuckle because it is a bone. So now that you know where your pubic bone is, don't be afraid to really tuck your disc up as far as it can go behind your pubic bone. Now we're gonna try to find your cervix, which is the tip of your uterus. And this is just to help you understand where it is so you know if you're getting it behind your cervix. You will insert a finger and feel for your cervix. It should feel something like the tip of your nose with a little indent in the middle. Some women can feel their cervix, so if you're inserting your disc and it hurts, it might be because you're hitting your cervix. 
If that is the case, try inserting it at an angle towards your butthole. When choosing your disc size, it's best to go off of your flow. So if you have a heavier flow, go with a larger disc. If you have a lighter flow, go with a smaller disc. If you wanna know what size is gonna be best for you, you can take our quiz. It's only eight questions, uh, super easy, and it will give you a good guess on what's going to be best for you. I will link that below. If you have a very light flow or tampons or other menstrual products have caused you pain, then go with the small pixie disc. If you have anything above a light flow, then you'll definitely wanna go with the Pixie Large Disc. If you do not have a disc yet, I would check out the Pixie Disc Kit. It comes with everything you need to start out with your menstrual disc journey. If you have been using your disc for a while and you don't think it's the right size, here's some indicators that you may need a different size. If the disc is causing you discomfort or pain in any way, you may just need to size down. If you've been using your menstrual disc and it's still coming untucked, it's not staying in place, that might be a reason to change sizes. If you're having to empty your disc quite a bit, more often than you thought you would, maybe like every three hours, then you probably have a disc that's too small, so you might wanna try going up a size. I hope that you guys enjoyed this content, and if you have just a few extra moments, it would really mean a lot if you can subscribe and like this video, if this content was helpful for you. It just helps us create more content and to know what you like.